an introduction to Song Kong Music Tagger. Song Kong is a professional music tagger application designed to simplify the task of managing our digital music collection. The concept behind Song Kong is that the majority of our songs can be identified automatically, and if this is done carefully, we get a complete and consistent music library. However, 100% music identification is not quite a reality yet. So Song Kong also provides manual and automated metadata editing as well. It can also reorganize, rename and delete duplicate songs. And we provide the flexibility to fine-tune Song Kong to get exactly the results required. Song Kong provides a regular desktop user interface for Windows, Apple and Linux personal computers. But it also provides a web user interface that can be used to control Song Kong remotely. And this means Song Kong can be used on servers without a monitor such as a NAS server. On a PC, we can switch to the web user interface very easily with the start remote mode option. But in this tutorial, we are going to use desktop mode. In this tutorial, we are going to go briefly through the main tasks. These are run against selected folders. This could be a single album or our whole music collection. This is an important feature of Song Kong that unlike other products, we do not have to work one album at a time, even when auto-matching our music. Each task has a number of options and combinations of options can be stored in profiles so they can be reused. When we select a task, we are then presented with the Select Profile screen. This allows us to select a predefined profile or create a new profile to use. The Status Report task is a very useful tool for taking a snapshot of our music collection. It is recommended we run this task before anything else. It has two main features. It creates a metadata completeness report and a spreadsheet of our song's existing metadata. Within the report, we can see exactly what metadata is contained using the Browse menu. Notice we have made a copy of two files, so we can demonstrate delete duplicates later. And if we select a folder, and then a file, we can see there is no metadata in our example test data. Let's look at the other two folders as well. We can see by looking at a file within each folder that they contain no metadata either. This is album 2. And this is album 3. If we select the view metadata as spreadsheet option, we can see all files one per line as a regular spreadsheet file. There are multiple tabs grouping different types of metadata, but again we see there is no metadata. The Fix Songs task can automatically identify and add metadata to our songs. We simply select the music folder, review the options and select Start. It uses three databases, Music Brains Discogs and Acoust ID. Music Brains is the most accurate and in-depth of all online music databases. Acoust ID creates an audio fingerprint one of your songs. This then allows the song to be looked up in the Acoust ID database. And this often has a link from an Acoust ID to a Music Brains ID, so in that way we match songs to Music Brains. So the primary use of Acoust ID is to help to match our songs to Music Brains. Acoust IDs are used in conjunction with existing metadata and folder structure to find the correct match. But Acoust ID database is larger than both Music Brains and Discogs. So it can very usefully be used to add basic metadata for songs that could not be found in Music Brains or Discogs. Matching is album-based, so Song Kong always keeps the integrity of our albums. There is no limit to the number of files we can update at one time. When it completes it creates a similar report to the status report. Select Browse, and then Browse by Album. Notice the first two albums have been matched to a Music Brains album. Select the first album. It handled the fact that we had two duplicate files. Select a song, and we can see a wealth of information has been added. If we scroll down, we can see the metadata added includes artist and album artist, front cover artwork, composer, and credits information. Links to discogs, music brains, mood metadata from acoustic brains, and sort fields. High and Dry by Def Leppard also matched and added similar information. But not the third album. 
we can see it still has no metadata, except audio fingerprint and ID added by Song Kong. The match to Bandcamp task works in a similar way to the fixed songs task, but instead of trying to match from Music Brains or Discogs, we match from Bandcamp. Bandcamp is the premier website for self-released albums with over 15 million digital albums. The vast majority of these are not listed on the Music Brains or Discogs sites. Let's start the Bandcamp task on our test data. Our third album is a self-released album from Bandcamp, so we should get a match. It has now completed. Select Browse and Browse by Album again, and we can see we now have metadata for the third album. This includes basic metadata like artist, album and title, front cover artwork, and links back to the album on Bandcamp. The Rename Files task can rename our songs based on their metadata. It is common to do this after a successful run of fixed songs, so that the metadata in the file name matches the metadata in the files, or because we want to change what metadata fields the file name contains. For example, from using track number and title to track number, artist and title. We can also use the Rename Files task to move files to a new root folder, and we can move matched songs to a different folder to unmatched songs. Let's use it to rename files by setting rename files based on metadata to yes if matched to a release. It will rename files based on the rename mask we have set. Unless it is a compilation, then it will set the compilation name mask. Let's go. And if we delve into the report via the browse menu, we can see the files have been renamed using some of the metadata we added to the files. And where there are duplicate files, these have now been put into an additional folder so even though rename files does not delete duplicate files, it acts sensibly when it encounters them. If we look at the second album as well, we see it has been renamed correctly. For example, the first track has been changed from album track 2.flag to Def Leopard, High and Dry, Disc 1 track 1 Def Leopard, Let It Go Flack. The Delete Duplicates task can find and remove duplicate songs in our collection. The Standard tab has options to determine how to find duplicate songs and what to do with the duplicates once they have been found, such as should they be deleted outright or moved to a duplicates folder. The Advanced tab allows us to control how Song Kong decides the songs to delete and the song to keep once it has identified duplicates in our collection. When duplicates are found, Song Kong decides upon the song to be kept and the songs to be deleted based on the order of the items in the Preferred Deletion Criteria option. The song that best matches the criteria is the song that is kept. The first item in the list is used to compare songs, and only if all the songs with the same duplicate key are found to have the same value for the criteria does additional criteria get used in the order they are listed. So, let's start. As we mentioned earlier, the first album in our test data contains two duplicate files, so these have now been deleted. If we look at the first duplicate key, we see since files were pretty much identical, Song Kong deleted the songs in the incomplete album folder, using the most songs in same folder criteria. This was the fourth criteria in the preferred criteria list. If we look at the second duplicate key, we can see this used the same criteria. We can see in the report the file that we kept and the files that we deleted. We can also fine-tune what album we match against with the Match to One Album task. We can select a folder such as the Def Leppard album and Song Kong presents us with multiple versions of the album that match and we can select the version we most like. For example, maybe there are multiple versions and we just want to pick the one from a particular country. So here we select a version released in the United States rather than the UK. After selecting the album song, Kong modifies our files with the metadata from the matching tracks. Once done, there is also the chance to do manual editing if we wish, but we don't do any editing this time. Once the changes are saved, a report is created. When we view the report, we see that the version selected has additional performer information. So sometimes it is worth switching to another album, because it may contain better metadata, 
because more metadata been added to the online database. The Metagrader task is for deleting particular metadata fields. So in this example we are going to add the performer and performer name fields to the list. Then we run the task. When we look into the report and use browse, we can see the selected fields have been deleted. Let's open the first song in the album. The deleted fields are highlighted in red. The auto edit task allows us to make an edit to many albums in a consistent way. This actually comprises three tools capitalizer, find and replace and trim. And any or all of these tools can be applied to multiple fields in one go. The basic tab defines which of these tools to enable and lets us run in preview mode if we wish. So let us uppercase the artist and title fields of all songs, just for fun. Now let's start the task and wait for the report. And we can see the results in the report. If we browse the folder and then select a file, we can see that the artist and title fields are now in uppercase. For even more advanced automated editing, we can use the scripter task. The scripter task can be used to modify the value of a song's metadata fields using the JavaScript expression language. The overall script can be written from scratch and or make use of the predefined scripts listed in the scripts list. So here we are going to remove padding from the disk number field. So instead of it saying 01, it just says 1. And we can see how this modifies the metadata when we run the task. Let's view the report. If we view a file, we can see the disk number field has now been modified from 01 to 1. All changes are also stored in the Songkong internal database, so at any point we can undo all changes made to a folder at a later date. Let's first close Songkong, then restart to demonstrate that the changes are stored in a permanent database. We shall select the Def Leopard folder and then the Undo Fixes task. As usual, the task generates a report. If we look at the results, we see it no longer has any metadata, they have all been deleted, shown by fields being highlighted red, and the files now have their original file names. This is how the files were before we used them with Songkong. This is the end of this introductory Songkong music tagger tutorial, we hope you found this useful. If you like this video, we have more in-depth tutorials on the individual tasks, and here are links to a couple of them.